<clears throat> so we're getting now to get the, this block ready for reassembly so the thing is now we've got to clean it out now I did give it a quick steam clean out which got rid of a, a lot of the thick stuff but now I'm just washing it over with a simple petrol or gas spray I know it's not the best of things but that's all I've got um, well I could put it in the parts washer but the problem is with the parts washer it doesn't filter very well so uh, it's nice to just to sort of wash it out with clean gas and I put it over a a drip tray and as you can see all the dirt that's still coming out of it but that was all loosened out of the uh, camshaft hole here the cast part where the camshaft shaft goes in there were some nasty little castings so I just simply got a brush a paintbrush and I went round it inside and washed it out and got rid of the thick the next thing I'm doing is I'm gonna use they say you shouldn't deglaze the bore but I'm using this thing and what we're going to do is just put a, a little bit of gas on the bar to lubricate it and we're going to hone, like honing it up and down and up and down and we're sort of looking for any scratches and you can see there perhaps you can see this bar here that's what you're aiming for a nice even finish like that same as that one if you can see there so I'm going to clean this up I'm going <clears> to <throat> finish off rinsing it off with gas and then I'm going to put it through the steam cleaner again <clears throat> the reason for that is I, I'm just going to make double sure that everything is really pressurized out and it you know if you're having to wash them off with gas do it in a an environment where it's well ventilated and no sparks because it's nasty stuff but um, sometimes, you know, washing off in petrol is the best way for home DIY guys to do it. You know, I'm just trying to think what I should tell you to do, but that's sometimes we've been doing it for years. If you can wash them off in diesel, but diesel just sort of makes a waxy and oily film and it doesn't always come off. So use whatever methods you can. I'll, when I, before I steam clean it, I'm going to use a, a proper engine degreaser spray that on and then we'll come back to it and then it should be about ready for paint because what I've done with it as well on the cast iron block let me get this out of the way is I've cleaned off <coughs> I've cleaned off all the faces on here uh, prior to you know prior to painting and I did that sort of with a wire brush in a drill and I just went round it and got all the bits of gasket off so it was all nice and clean. But there are still a few bits and pieces like I can see here that I can concentrate on now and get that off. So like again, finish off doing the horn, make sure all the gasket faces are clean, rod through all the oilways and then we can sort of get round to doing the painting. Now, prior to painting, just to make sure it's a nice job, I'm going to take out the rest of these uh, core plugs here, and so when we go, when we paint the block black, it's going to look quite nice. You know, when you can you can see the new plugs put in. So that's what we're going to get up to, and then we'll come back to this once it's all painted. So after a, a good old steam cleaning, and what I did was I washed it off prior with auto engine and machine cleaner it comes up really nice but it gets all the grease off all the rust and look at the difference inside the block it's uh, it's got a, just a light surface of rust but the, the block is hot from the steam and there's no oil or residue or anything on that it, it is really super clean so the next thing I've blown out all the holes, everything, so the next thing is to give it a coat of paint. So I'm going to see what I've got. I think I've got some two-pack. I'm going to give it a go, but you can see how the, you know, as soon as you've got all the grease off, how it rusts up straight away, but you clean it off with your fingers a little bit. What I'll do is I'll put an oily rag down the bore. You know, they won't get any worse, but you can see they're really easy to clean off, but it's not serious. The block face is good, 
but I'll just put a, a, a paper towel with some uh, oil down those bars and they'll come up like new. So, up like that bit, so the next thing, bit of paint. So last night before I finished, once it was all nice, I give it a coat of Beluga Black um, Urethane, two pack, uh, and it's come up really nice and shiny. It's, uh, it's got to be good, it'd be nice and easy to wash off. But there's even better news, because last night when I was wandering around in my shed, I found a rod. So I'm not going to bore out the, uh, the cap, it would have been an interesting video to see how to reclaim it. But uh, I've got one here. So, the next thing is to clean up the pistons. Now I'm going to clean up the pistons in a sort of a way that is frowned upon, but is practical. And I'm going to use uh, oven cleaner, my old favourite, because it's non-destructive and it can get right inside the groove, like Madonna, she gets into the groove as well, uh, and it doesn't scratch. It, it's really nice, but you've got to wear gloves, all right? You've got to wear gloves and you've got to wear goggles because oven cleaner's nasty stuff. Uh, and it really is because it's caustic. It makes your hands go all funny because it eats the, the grease in your hands. But, um, and it's not good for aluminium, but if you only put it on for a few minutes and wash it off, it's not too bad. Well, it's not bad at all, really, but if you had a, an aluminium bucket or a galvanised bucket, well, it's not very good at all. <clears throat> but um, a lot of people say we shouldn't use it on aluminium. But in this case, we just squirt it on two minutes on and off. Let me show you. So I've given this a squirt just round the top edge with a bit of oven cleaner and I've given it one go already but you can see how it's cleaned off the carbon and you can see where the injector has been spraying diesel. Interesting that eh? Now in the bottom rings here they were perfect but in the top ring there was quite a bit of carbon. So what I did was I bent a, I got the old top ring off and I bent it so I could use it and just to loosen that existing carbon off and you can see perhaps here with the with the oven cleaner it's softening that carbon off you can see how it goes really mushy and it makes it nice and easy to clean you can see on the top too you know it's not nice stuff to use so just really be careful of that I'm going to wash this off and then I'm going to come back and notice the safety equipment and we'll see what it looks like. So I've just given this a wash and uh, you can see there's one or two little remaining bits of carbon and all we do is simply get our piston ring scraper and just push it out. That's all it needs. So those grooves are nice and clean all the way around. You can actually get a tool for cleaning out uh, rings, ring grooves, but you didn't really need it in this case. And you can probably see the steel insert a little bit clearer now in the top ring. But these pistons are really good, we can use those again. Not a problem at all. So um, this is number three, this was the offending one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fit this to the rod now. I'm going to lubricate up the pin, put it all back together, and I'm going to just do one at a time because as we know that these pistons are so, like, like sort of offset a little bit so we're going to put that back onto the rod in the same way as the others so what you're going to do is you're going to come just do one at a time and if you don't think it's right just compare one to the other it's easy to take the pin out but you don't want to get them all sort of in the engine and then one's one way so just do one at a time and then we'll show you how you put the rings back on so just out of interest, seeing I've got the rod off, uh, I'll show you why I said before that it's good for a machine shop to put the bush in because it is tapered and it, you know, it's kind of tricky. You could actually, if you're not really sure how to put these in, you could actually kick them over and ruin a bush. Now the interesting point is inside of here, I don't know if you can see, probably Let's turn that, ah, there you go. You can see the oil groove goes to the top. And you can see how oil can go, if this is the top of the rod, 
you can see how oil can feed down into the bottom you know it, it drops down by gravity so you know when you put your rod through uh, your, your little end through it feels really nice now this is the spare rod I've got it cleaned up really nice uh, I've mic'd it up everything's really really good it cleaned up well nothing to fault on that one so this one's going to go back in so what we're going to do is going to do the whole set uh, the whole set of pistons get them all cleaned up get them all prepped up ready to go back in put the rings on and then the first job I do is put the pistons in now you're thinking that's a really odd way of doing things well the thing is it's a good before you put the crank in it's a good idea to put the the bushing in here the uh, the bearing because when you're tapping them down you can actually knock the bearing out and then it's kind of difficult if you've got the crank in to try and put the bearing in now it's a way that it's a system I've used for a long time and it seems to work but then what I do is I screw a bar across the top of here so the pistons can't come out you know if when you turn it upside down not that they will because of the rings but you never know with all that messing about it, you could actually just push one out so let me get all these put back together and we'll get the rings on and then we'll do the next stage of putting the pistons in this is the replacement rod and this is a pair of internal calipers and it's a very old way if you haven't got a micrometer or an internal micrometer you can use these good old things to test bores it won't give you a a measurement but it'll give you a feel of what things are like and what you do is you open them out a little bit you set them at an angle like that set them at an angle and then pull them so they're in the middle and you'll feel they're absolutely touching both sides there's no play it really is about feeling your way around with this and then try them on, on the uh, split and it should be exactly the same so I know that this rod is perfect alright this is this is really nice but you can use them inside the cylinder bore as well you know you can do but it, they're a little bit difficult to tip out tip over and that's the most important thing about using them is that you've got to open them out first like that and then just it's a matter of tapping them look you see and then bring them up into the middle so the parallel now that when you tip them back that gap that gap's going to be big but when you tip them opposite either so the tips are opposite each other they're going to feel just right and now that's an easy way of testing your bearings now you can do that with the mains as well test all the main caps main caps very 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 rarely give a problem very rarely but pick these little old things up nobody sort of wants them before wants them again these are moor and right ones you can get internal and external and it's surprising how often you can use a tool like this for doing all sorts of stuff and believe me it's not just for engines like measuring exhaust pipes and things like that when you want to sleeve one inside another you can put this chap inside the exhaust or, the, or uh, you get an external one and you can make sure it's, uh, it's going to fit so I'm going to go and get on and fit the rings to the rest of these but I just wanted to show you that I've checked the bearing and this rod's going to be good so thwarted what you're on about well if you can remember when these pistons were inside the bars I, I moved these rods up and down to see if there was any end play on the, um, the little end however I don't know if you can see this, if I hold this tight and turn this I don't know if I can get that can you see that the bushings have gone they're alright up and down but side to side there's a little play in them and in fact I put one in a piston in, a, in the bore just to check that and you can see the rod moving side to side, I hope you can see that it's not side to side like that look it's, if I jam that tight at the bottom so, a new set of bushes damn, and I forgot to water some well, 
My bad, I forgot to, I, I thought they were alright when I had them in the piston. Now these haven't got any oil in them because I've just washed them off. But the thing is, even with oil in it's not going to take that up. So we're going to have to postpone this. But what we can do is we can put the camshaft in. But uh, <clears throat> I'm going to, uh, I'm just suspecting now with all this carbony type stuff that's in this motor. Whether it's blocked the jets up from underneath for the oil, spl uh, the oil splash. I don't know. But anyway, I'm cleaning everything up as I go along. But I think today what I'll concentrate, seeing I'm stuck for pistons and things, is to build up all the ancillaries on the outside as much as I can. And uh, try and get something done. Uh, I'm going to be kind of stuck, really. But uh, I'm not going to put this together without any bushings in. Let's see what happens next. I thought I'd add this bit into the end of this section of the video uh, because we've got a problem and it's a big problem but something I didn't realise when we were talking about these uh, little end bushes in here well actually I, I actually ran a rummage through the shelf and I actually had four on the shelf now I, I must have had them for years and years and years I didn't realise why I hadn't fitted them and then the penny dropped is that they are so difficult to fit because they're on a taper uh, it's getting them in square that's, that's sort of the problem well it wasn't a problem I took them down to my machine shop and they rarely see rods that are on an angle like that so bear that in mind so what my machine shop man did, he made a taper support so he could push the bushes out and push the bushes in. You know, he did it on his miller and corresponding angles and blah blah blah. That was okay. But he said, Mike, he said, those bushings were a bitch to fit. Like, they were twenty thousandth of an inch bigger than the hole so they would have a good grip. Not a problem. He just pressed him in. Problem was, when he was trying to hone them out, let me come up closer and I'll explain. You see the grooves in here for the um, oilways? Well, his honing machine would actually catch on those and it would bias the, the horn. So there's your pin like this look, and it was eating away inside the groove and not at the bottom. So what was happening is, instead of going parallel, it was going up like this and taking more material out of the top than the bottom. Problem. So I thought to myself, well, must be, must be, it can't be that difficult. Anyway, when I got back home and I read the actual manual, it says the bushes are not replaceable. I can understand now, camera cut out again. So what, what I was saying was, um, Land Rover in the workshop manual says that if this little end bushing is gone, you need to replace the whole rod. So why sell the bushings? Well, I did a bit of background about that one. The replacement rods from our friends in Britpark, and I don't want to buy those, are actually um, made in India. These are made in India. And the bushings are actually made in India. So it makes sense that they're going to sell the bushings separately. Now this is kind of strange because if you look on the micro catalogue, they actually do a part number for the bush. But in the manual, it says that you can't fit the bush. Now maybe it's because I'm looking at a very old series, uh, a 300 TDI workshop manual. I really don't know. So anyway, what, what the top and bottom of it is, before I get too carried away with this, is this. If the pin is too high up, I'll exaggerate it really, otherwise it'd be sticking up the end. But if it's too high up, that means the piston is going to be too high. Uh -huh. Didn't think of that, did you? So that means it's, it could hit the head or hit the valves. 
We're only talking twenty thousandth of an inch here, but it's quite a lot on a, on a diesel engine. So what my machine shop man's going to do today, if he gets five minutes, is he's going to set this on his uh, miller. He's clamping this bit down here, and he's going to try and mill this out to get the majority of the material out. Uh, and then hone it to just to finish it the last two thousandth of an inch so this is a nice smooth fit and that that will allow uh, you can keep the distance between the little end and the big end all the same what a mess about now uh, we, we're sort of where I live I'm very limited for machine shops and things like this and uh, you know you guys in the UK and states and stuff like that you've got stuff all over the place but we, we're miles away from anything and my guy does his best, but like I say, we, we didn't realise that there would be a problem with these bushings. So this is why this job's getting held up a little bit. It seems to get to about two minutes it cuts out. Anyway, so all the years I've been doing Land Rover engines, if we take the new Gudgeon pin out of the uh, replacement pistons, we put them in and we feel them. We feel if there's any play. But on this engine, all four bushings were finished. Why is that? Why would they? Why would they go? There's no actual reason for them because you can see what because they're worn the wider at the bottom than the top. Well, the reason is because all the force from the pistons coming down and contacting on this bottom area. The top really does not not much at all. Well, it helps it when it comes back up again. But um, why would why were they rocking so much? beats me, I don't know, but I'm not going to put them back in all loosey-doosey, I'm not happy with it. So, we'll get to know today if they can be salvaged, and if not, I'm going to have to get new rods, and they're about 30, 40 quid a piece, but the problem is they're Indian. I might have to put a shout out to some guys on, and try and find a set of good used rods, rather than... Indian rods. Mm -hmm. I certainly couldn't afford Land Rover ones to be, be cheap to buy a new engine. <laughs> so anyway, that's that's the top and bottom of it. So we're trying to make this engine better, but sometimes you get thwarted. Anyway, we'll talk to you later.